All right, guys, I was working on my HMI and all of a sudden um, I was trying to upload a project and I got stuck on the bootloader screen. So the bootloader screen looks like this. Let me plug in my HMI and you'll see it. You may not have noticed it, but the bootloader screen is there every time that you turn it on. So here it comes, there it is right there. So it was stuck on this screen right here and would not load uh, my program. And I was losing my mind because I had a two or $300 HMI that now became a brick. So I started looking for an answer as to how to fix the problem. Uh, and as you're going through uh, the internet, then it takes you on a bit of a, a chase trying to find uh, the answers. So um, let me just make this larger. So KTP Comfort HMI not connecting to the ethernet. That was the answer. Uh, but I was looking over here. HMI stuck in bootloader screen, how to fix. Again, all of your answers will be found in this Siemens uh, technical forum. You just have to hunt for them, but I will leave these links in the comments section below because this one actually worked for me. So um, it says, hi there, just had a major tro trouble with a couple of HMIs. I got lost in the middle of an OS update and got stuck on the bootloader screen. Nice, that's exactly what, ha what was happening to me. Um, and as you go through, there is a number of things that they mentioned to do. So I'll put this in the, uh, in the comment section just to see whether this works for you. Um, but they were saying to make use of, <clears throat> um, like this is not helpful whatsoever. If it failed, try multiple times. If, if so, contact Siemens for a replacement. Good luck with that. Um, so they were saying in this thing to try an, an OS update and reset to factory settings. Um, so I tried that, but I wasn't able to talk to my, my HMI. So you can use, so let me just go down here. You can go to Siemens. And if we open this guy up, there is this thing called Somatic Pro Save. So you can open this guy up and you can talk to your, um, to your HMI th through the ethernet if you still have the ability to, to talk to it, whether it kept that IP or not, right? So, um, you could also do an OS update. So I tried to do that and put the Mac address in, but again, I wasn't able to talk to it whatsoever. So I, there was no way for my laptop to talk to my HMI to change anything. So after a little bit more hunting, I found that um, this guy, so KTP Comfort HMI device not connecting to the ethernet, kind of the same thing as what I was looking for. And when I scroll down to the bottom, so again, they were mentioning to uh, to open that somatic pro save and try and have it talk to it, but I can't have my laptop talk to my HMI, so I need another way to do it. And I remember that there was a, a USB port on the bottom of the HMI. Again, there's, there's the same gentleman trying to find an answer on a number of uh, forums here. So, and then all of a sudden it says here from the wizard, and he's definitely a wizard because this worked for me. Uh, hello, perhaps you can try to reset to factory settings using the USB stick. Oh, that sounds good. So you click on this guy right here, USB recovery, reset to factory mode for second generation basic panels. Again, I'll put all of this as links below. Okay, so software has been released for these guys. Um, and if we scroll down, how do you reset to factory settings for your basic panel? So requirements, you need a USB stick, okay, to be provided in FAT32 format. I'm right here, guys. Okay, so uh, the USB stick has to be provided with USB version 2.0 or lower. Uh, the HMI device image file must be provided with version 14. Okay, so you need a USB uh, that is formatted in FAT32 format. And you can do that by, uh, by going to your USB. So where is my USB? This guy right here, right? and clicking on that guy, go to properties and right on. It is formatted in FAT32, beautiful. Okay, so that's good. I've got my USB ready to go. Um, and it says unpack the basic second uh, recovery system zip directly onto the USB uh, in the main directory. Copy the suitable HMI device image file onto the path somatic HMI recovery onto the USB stick file type FWF. So first thing you need to do is you need to download this, the basic second recovery system zip file, and you need to download that, download that to your stick, your USB stick. So again, 
my USB stick is right here. And so I have downloaded it here, it's basic second recovery system. And then all you do is you just go like this and extract all. So if you have some type of WinZip recovery, uh, you can extract all those guys. And then you will have two files. You'll have basic plus and somatic.hmi. Okay, the next thing it says is that copy the suitable HMI device image onto the path somatic HMI recovery on the USB stick. And you're looking for a file type uh, .fwf. You can find the HMI device under programs. So you gotta go to C, then you're going to program files. So we'll open that guy up. Okay, then we're going to Siemens automation. So we're scrolling down here until we see Siemens. Then we're in automation, beautiful. Okay, uh, Portal V14, I'm using V15, so I'm going to open up that guy. Okay, then we're looking for um, what? data HMI, so data. So it is really hidden here, but you just follow their steps. There's HMI, uh, transfer, beauty, still there. Excellent, and I went with the uh, 15 and the images, so images right here. And so there is an image that is already there for each of your HMIs. I was using a KTP 400, so I'm opening up KTP 400. Ah, yes, we're looking for a file type with FWF. There it is right there. Okay, so I went with uh, the newest version that I had from the last time that I updated Siemens TIA portal. And so you're gonna copy this file, and it says um, to put it where? Copy the image file into somatic HMI recovery. Okay, so again, you go here, you copy, then you go to your, your USB stick, and you go into somatic HMI recovery, and then you paste that bad boy right onto your stick. Okay, that's the image that you're going to download to your HMI. I can't have my laptop talk to my HMI, but I can sure enough put a USB stick into there and then reset the HMI and have it boot from this stick now. So it says to shut down the HMI device, plug the USB stick into the USB interface of the HMI, switch on the HMI device, and to reset the HMI to the factory settings, uh, pl press the button start recovery three times. Excellent, okay, so it says shut down the HMI device. Okay, so we're gonna take out the USB and we're going to put it on, put this guy uh, into the bottom of our HMI. So I just had this on with double-sided Velcro. So I'm gonna shove this bad boy. I'm gonna take my ethernet cable out. I'm gonna shove the um, USB stick in, but first I have to, um, I have to turn off my HMI. So I'm going to shove the USB stick in that has my, uh, my file. Let me just stick her right back on there. Okay, something's in the way there. Oh, the USB stick's in the way, donkey. Okay, beautiful. And then what I need to do is just need to power this guy up. So all I've done to, to power and depower the HMI is to just take out that uh, quick connect cable that provides it with the 24 volts. And I just have to finagle my <coughs> power button connector back in come on let's go oh there goes the camera there she is okay she's in and she's starting to load up okay and it's now reading from the USB let's see if this works Bump my camera, there we go. Okay, nice. Okay, so there's our uh, Siemens HMI recovery mode, and it says to hit this guy three times. I don't know if you can make it out there, but it says start recovery three, so two, one, bam. Okay, recovery in progress, do not turn off the device, and hopefully this works. Now the first time I did this, it didn't work. I had to actually turn the, uh, the HMI off and then turn it back on again. So it looks like that's happening again. And hopefully in doing a video on how to recover your HMI, I'm not, oh, there it goes. Beauty. I was afraid that I was again gonna turn my HMI into a brick just by doing a, a video on this. Okay, so it's like watching paint dry, 30%. So we'll speed this guy up 
and then you'll see at 100% that it will ask us to reset it. So it says at the end of the recovery process, remove the USB stick and press the reboot button. Beautiful. Okay, recovery has been finished. Please unplug the USB stick and press reboot. Okay, so we're going to unplug the USB now. I'm going to pull it off here so I can get my USB out. Okay, beauty. And now hopefully the OS is now on there, so we're going to hit reboot. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's making me nervous. It's taking a while. Maybe. Could be. It's gorgeous. Right on. Okay, so we're up and running. And now you're able to uh, set your, I your IP again. So you're right back to factory settings, right? You're going to have to go to, to settings. And you're going to have to set your IP and everything, right? So you're going to have to go to network interface. Um, and then turn this guy off and then set your IP, your subnet mask and your default gateway. And then you'll be able to talk with uh, TAA portal. Awesome, eh? So now, if you have a yourself or a customer that has this issue, um, and you might want to do this once you've finished off a project um, and you're walking away from the customer, then just download that image onto a stick for them, onto a USB stick, um, and then if that you, that HMI ever dies, you have the image, so you just leave it with them, and they'll leave it in the office. Um, and if that uh, if that particular KTP 400 or 700 goes down, then you have the exact image that you've left with the customer and you can walk them through the procedure on the phone and then they can get their, um, they can get it up and running and then, uh, then you can have the TIA portal then talk to it. All right, guys, hopefully that helped you. It definitely helped me. Shout out again to, uh, to the forum. All the answers are there. You just got to be able to take some time to, uh, to find them. All right, guys, thanks very much for your patience. We'll see you on the next one.